Hello and welcome on another session on workflow and tips. Today I'm going to discuss on Autodesk Mold Flow Core Shift Analysis. Starting with the introduction, what this core shift is all about. Core shift is the spatial deviation in the position of the core from its original position in the cavity before the plastic is injected in the cavity. It has significant impact onto the packing pressure. It is frequent problem with a long slender and not necessarily a thin wall products such as vials, test tubes and pen barrels. It is also experienced often in the molds of thin wall components. So what definition is all about? It's also known as ore molding, also called as the part insert ore molding, where in the tool insert or the insert could be of metal or could be of polymer. Some of the common examples that I like to highlight over here are the electrical connectors, part with threaded inserts, extension cord ends, and there are a lot of example in the medical industries as well. Why to run a core shift analysis? Why it is necessary to determine how much core moves during the molding cycle. Moving core can impact onto the wall thickness of the part, the filling pattern, the weld lines and A traps and thereby causes a premature part failure in the field. When to run a core shift analysis? Core shift is run for the long unsupported you know, core inserts. When the core, core is created or constructed of the low modulus materials, sometimes it's a necessity for the tooling uh, requirement. Small parts inserts are molded around. First shot or the two shot molding process. To determine how moving cores influence the end, end warpage results. What type of analysis or capabilities has been supported? It supports all mesh types. And when it comes to the analysis sequence, fill pack and but obvious cool fill pack and warp analysis. It does support for the fiber fill analysis as well for all the above sequences. And cool FEM is supported for the dual domain and 3D mesh for all above sequences. So how does the core shift works? In short, I try to put it into the workflow chart. Like we start the analysis, it does the flow calculations and time to calculate the core shift has been done. And then on that, the input pressure distribution uh, is applied. And then it adjusts the cavity thickness. And then uh, again, it, it calculates the flow wear. And to say that this is an iterative transient analysis till the convergence happens. And you could see in the, when I will take you through the parameter settings, you could see the options for the setting up the time steps as well. So what are the basic requirement for the, to run the code shift analysis? Well, we need the part, part can be anything onto the mid plane dual, do, dual domain or 3D mesh, but core has to be constructed of the tetrahedral element or the 3D mesh must have excellent mesh match between the core part and element and try to show you during the demonstration of the workflow and model only the core uh, only the core portion inside the part and constrain the nodes at the end like shown in the in the first picture but you know but obviously you may land up creating the core uh, bigger core uh, that will just increase the number of elements, uh, but I would not recommend doing that. So cutting the core and just at the part level or the only keeping the core that is insert uh, within the part is, is, uh, is recommended. Let's look at the demonstration. For the demonstration purpose, I have considered an, an, an one of the you know pharmaceutical um, component that's a syringe. Uh, it's assembly of the of the uh, uh, syringe and the piston, and just want to show that fusion allows you to you know do all those 
uh, you know work around or geometry simplifications that are needed to run the analysis so in this say i can see i can show you that that's a syringe and then the piston is all the way inside the part well as i mentioned in the during the presentation that we need only this much of the portion uh, only the core that is been inserted in the in the part and i'm just create, going to create and construct an plane over here so that i can trim off and before i trim i don't want to trim off directly on the edge but i'll keep a gap of like in 2 mm over here and then i can use a boolean operation or or split body option option over here select the body to be splitted and the splitting tool over here is the plane and just say okay you can see that the two bodies has been created i would just say that i don't want to delete this body well this is where the fusion helps in the quick geometry modification doesn't have to depend upon the unit third party cat tool for those requirement and that makes the analyst or the engineers or designers you know ability to modify the geometry and then i'm going to push in this geometry again to for the simulation purpose right from the fusion so it ask you do you want to create the existing project or create a new project i am going to create that yeah i want to create an existing project that's it and then uh, pick up that existing project uh, file and you are okay to push in the geometry over there as you can see that the geometry is available both both part and the core i am going to run an actually a, a dual domain analysis or dual domain uh mesh on, for this part but it is mentioned that same time we have to create a 3d mesh on that so what's the workflow for it is that i going to create a first dual domain mesh but when generating a dual, dual domain mesh i am going to show you how to work on the precise mesh match so that i am creating a precise mesh for the core as well as for the part so when you go into the global setting instead of using the auto set sizing i'm going to use a global parameters and global parameters i'm going to put in this value as 1.5 and start the chord angles and then instead of ignoring the contact i'm going to say that okay create an exact precise match and that's it and i'm going to create an mesh now for the saving the time per uh, saving the time i already created the mesh for it and I want to show you that how precisely it matches the mesh so the mesh or the nodes that are created on to the part and the core are precisely matched over here okay now since we are going to work on to dual domain but the core we need to be on to the 3d so for the time being i am going to off the syringe over here and in this case i am going to change the uh, mesh type from dual domain to 3d and i'm going to generate an 3d mesh for this one since this is also dual domain but we need an 3d mesh for this and uh, i'm going to generate a mesh over here i'm not going to change any of these parameters so i'm just going to uh, change the dual domain mesh for the core to th that's completes the mesh for the 3d and now we are going to assign the attributes for this if you click on these and properties yeah it it's core 3d i already assign it you can assign it at the at the time of importing it. like i want to show it to over here so for this part if you select over here and change the property type you can or sorry you can just change the analysis type from the 3d over here and for this part change the property type to 3d okay and then later on you can just change it to the dual domain that's not a problem so in this case i created the mesh is 3d and now i'm going to change the analysis sequence back form to dual domain so that i have the now a dual domain mesh over here this is my dual domain mesh and this is the 3d mesh for this okay so now comes to the important part is assigning the boundary conditions so this core has to be constrained at the bottom so i'm going to use the fixed constraint well you have a multiple constraints options 
to like one sided constant option is also made available from 2017 so you probably wants to have a look at that as well uh, so more information for this is available on to the knowledge.autodesk.com so i'm going to uncheck this and on the notes for this and i'm going to select only those notes at the at the bottom yeah and say for the user constraint that i'm going to use is the core shift analysis and apply it and the latter things are pretty much easy you can assign, create the gate or the cooling systems and whatever you want to do it um, that, that's it uh, important the another important thing in the process conditions is to make the changes so that you run the core shift analysis is on the core shift here you should be performing check that it, it is performing a core shift analysis and as i mentioned during the presentation you can change a lot of parameters or yeah the incremental steps and so on and so forth so probably you can have a, a look into the details of it already run the analysis for this this part and before i go and try and showing the results i want to look at the thickness for it so that uh, restrict the visibility so this portion is particularly is of the 0.5 mm from 0.5 mm to all the way it goes to like an almost like 0.5 mm uh, uh, this portion is having and it's uniform 0.5 mm okay we want to see that how the core shifts and then changes the wall thickness of it so uh, what I ran is I ran the three analysis with the original uh, process parameters with the original packing profile. And then second one, uh, what I did is I changed the packing profile to 40% by default, it was 80 and moved it to the 40, uh, for, uh, moved it to 50%, I would say of that. Like in original, I want to show it to you over here. Okay, and this is 80, I made it like an 40 of that and then in third thing I did it is 120 I made it so I'm going to compare the you know deflection the stresses that are going to come on onto the core and, and see how the packing pressure impacts to it so original design I'm going to start with and I created the all the way like in feed systems I created like a submarine gate for it and it's a multi-cavity part uh, so for the just for the analysis purpose I use the occurrence number for it let's look at the filling time and you can see the animation all the way goes and then you can see that little bit there is a difference into the filling pattern and maybe probably if you want to see a, in a better way I would recommend looking at into the contour option and you should be able to see that what is happening and then you can look at the temperature flow front plot as well you can see that the core might have shifted and that could be the reason that the temperature i could see or drop the reason the drop is like wherever there is a change in the thickness or reduction in the thickness it's the temperature tries to uh, drop there let's look at on to the main results that is the core core deformation so core is being deformed almost by 0.1 mm from its original position and we can see the animation of that how it is getting deflected not only it has deflected but it also has changed the thickness of this as i mentioned that earlier the thickness for this entire section was 0.5 now i don't know whether it has become like an yeah, 0 0.045 it has been reduced almost like a 0 0.01 so 0 0.05 that is a change into the other side of it so you should see a little bit increase in the thickness of this direction yeah 
can able to see that uh, instead of like 0.5 it has become 0.53 and you can able to see the one mass stresses as well yeah and the maximum one mass stresses for this the important part is here to compare like how the packing pressure impacts over here so i'm going to open all the three study files the original with the 40 percent and with the 20 percent So this is with the this is original. This is forty percent, forty percent of packing pressure, and this is one twenty percent packing pressure. And let's look at onto the displacement. So this is original. This is one twenty percent. This is forty percent. I should shift over here, this, and you can see that point eighty two is the original point zero nine. Then. 40% of course it has little reduced over here and with that one this is increased. So that can you can see the impact of the packing pressure over there. The for the better visualization, I think we should look at the one mass stresses because that will give a better results how the packing pressure is impacting. So with the original it was like 225, then with the 40% of the packing pressure or the for getting into 40 is 175 and if you make it 120 uh, then uh, it is 399 so this will give a better understanding like and how the score are moving which regions are having the high stresses and thereby you can look on to the life of your core as well thank you i hope today's demonstration was a little longer but give a fair understanding how to work upon the core shift analysis if you have further queries please reach out to the nearest sim authorized reseller or to the autodesk sales representative thank you for your time